Hey buddy, just giving my thoughts on Lawler versus Covington on ESPN. UFC is on tomorrow. Um, I'm not doing fight picks, by the way. So I'm not picking any more fights. I'm not working with fightpicks.com at the moment. So I don't have to pick fights. I can just break them down and see what happens. So the problem with this card, I, I don't want to say problem, but a lot of people were critical last week of UFC 240 being a pay-per-view. They didn't feel it was a very strong card. There was basically just a main event, and that's about it. There wasn't a whole lot else on the card last week for 240. This one is similar, but at least we're not paying for it. It's on free TV. So I, the criticisms of this card I, aren't as strong to me because, you know, you're not paying for it. So there are some good mix-ups. Uh, a lot of people are trying to separate themselves from the f pack. There's a good combination of fighters trying to make it and fighters that haven't yet found success in the UFC. That's what you expect from a free card, generally speaking. Um, I'm basically going to talk about the co-main and main for this one. And the co-main event, which, of course, is uh, the Carpenter, Clay Guida, versus Jim Miller. Two veteran names. They're both very, very exciting. The problem I have with this kind of co-main event, even on a free card, is the co-main event, generally I want stakes for that. It doesn't have to be a title fight. doesn't even have to be a number one contender fight. But there has to be clear movement. There has to be the winner of this fight because it's such a big position on a car, the co-main event, someone has to go somewhere. There have to be stakes to me on a co-main event. Co-main event and main event. So for this co-main event, Jim Miller versus Clay Guida, neither guy is really going anywhere. They're both in the same part of their career. Not many fights left. They've gone through a lot of wars. They've delivered very, very crowd-pleasing fights. But the winner's not getting a title shot. The loser's not getting booted out of the UFC. It might be the loser's, loser's last fight just because of where they are in their careers, not necessarily based on where they're going trajectory-wise, I'll never get a title shot, blah, 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 blah. The, the, there aren't a lot of stakes to this fight. The winner doesn't get hurt very badly. The winner doesn't go very far forward. It could be an exciting fight, but generally a fight that just has veteran name potential that doesn't have stakes is lower down on the card. Might be an opener, something like this, to really get you going in the beginning. So the fact that it's a co-main event, it's Jim Miller versus Clay Guida, um, it could be an entertaining fight, but I just like more stakes in a co-main event. How that fight's going to break down, I generally think they're both, they both have a high work rate, they're both well-rounded. Clay Guida's style, which is wrestle, 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 grind, 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 tends to age a little bit better than Jim Miller. Jim Miller, Jim Miller hasn't done as well in his last few fights. His last seven, I think he's two and five. But they've been against better names. He's fought better quality guys than uh, Clay Guida in his last few fights. Neither guy has beaten a, a relevant name, of course. Clay Guida beating BJ Penn last time out. But, you know, we all know what's happening with BJ Penn. Against contenders right now, they lose. Against mid-level talent that's really sharp right now, both of them lose. So I, I would argue Jim Miller's on a bigger slide numbers-wise. But it's been against better names. He's fought some really good contenders in that slide in his last few fights. Clay Guida has been back and forth, but against middling contention. Middling contenders, I'm sorry. So I think the fight probably favors Clay Guida just because style-wise, offense and wrestle, that's a very aging, friendly style. That's the kind of style you want when you get older. It doesn't tax a lot of your ability to be, be quick and fast and athletic. It's wear your opponent down and have a better gas tank. Clay Guida can still do that. We've seen it. We've seen him doing his last few fights. Jim Miller was always a well-rounded guy who could really take a shot, could really give one. He got into a lot of wars and brawls and was well-rounded enough to use his takedown when he needed it, use his jiu-jitsu when he needed it. But he had a, a lot of everything, not just a little bit of everything. Jim Miller was pretty good at everything. Not exceptional at any one thing. Clay Guida always relied on his wrestling. And at the, the stages they are in their careers, uh, Clay Guida's style is a little bit easier to ride off into the sunset with. You can always out-wrestle somebody. Uh, that's why Randy Couture was successful as late as he was. He just out-wrestled guys. He didn't get in a lot of brawls. He didn't get in a lot of battles. So he had a good top control style, and that's what Clay Guida still has. The main event, uh, Robbie Lawler versus Colby Covington. I could talk forever about the ins and outs of Colby Covington's shtick. The only thing I will say personally is I interviewed him before his fight against Rafael Dos Santos in Chicago, and he's a totally different dude in real life. It was over the phone, but literally, if it hadn't been for his voice, which I recognized, you wouldn't know it's the same guy. You really wouldn't know it's him. If, if you were just on the phone with, with Colby Covington doing an interview, you have no idea it's, it's the MAGA hat, three chicks guy. On t like, he, he doesn't sound like that at all. He doesn't talk like that, anything. Um, I'm not in any way condoning his shtick. It's just I've seen the other side of it. 
I understand, in a sense, why he does it in that fans react to it. Colby Covington gets a reaction out of fans that he never got when he was a good guy, when he was just a regular wrestler who was beating guys but didn't have this shtick. You know, he, he didn't really – he didn't get the attention. He's getting it now, and it's making him more money. So you can dislike it, and I dislike it, but, I mean, you understand the motivation for it. You understand why he does it. Robbie Lawler, on the other hand, doesn't do anything like that. Never has. I've been watching that kid since he was 19 years old. Um, so an excellent fighter, hard hitter, but he's never relied on any kind of trash talk or stick. He just knocks guys out. He has a visually really appealing style. And when you have that, a lot of times you don't need everything else. So the thing about Colby Covington that is kind of the, the main thing I look at in this fight is he's – Beaten, of course, some excellent 170-pounders. The best he's beaten. Uh, his last three fights, especially his last two, Rafael Dos Anjos, Damian Maia, Dong Hyun Kim. Okay? All by decision. The, the issue with his last couple fights is he walked into a lot of punches, but he was facing fighters that didn't have knockout power. Rafael Dos Anjos is a tweener. He's too big for 55. He's too small for 170. He just didn't have the knockout power to hurt Colby Covington. Colby Covington ate a lot of shots coming in, putting him against the fence, looking for takedowns, grinding, 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 but he felt safe kind of in that middle range because he wasn't facing a knockout puncher. The ability Dos Anjos had, and we'll go into this a little bit more later against Robbie Lawler, was was kind of able to wear Robbie Lawler down, kind of stay in his chest and throw the combinations that none of them really hurt Robbie. They weren't like these big knockouts. Colby Covington was bigger and stronger and a better wrestler and didn't allow Rafael Dos Santos to do that. And Rafael Dos Santos was trying to catch him with big punches coming in to stun him and kind of back him off. He didn't have the build and the style to do that. Rafael Dos Santos is not at 170 a one-shot knockout guy. He doesn't have that power at 170 and Colby Covington exploited that. Damian Maia hit him a lot. Damian Maia is not a power puncher. So in both instances, he was taking on, on fighters that he could take a lot of risks with. He could wade through the shots to get in the range he wanted and get the takedown and work the ground and pound and didn't have to worry about the knockout shot coming. He really has to worry about that against Robbie Lawler. Robbie hits too hard for you to take a lot of risks at the medium range. Another thing I look at is Robbie Lawler has faced a lot of fighters who fight like Colby Covington. He's faced a lot of them. A, you know, uh, a standout wrestlers have really been the the bread and butter of, of his career. In the time Robbie Lawler was coming up uh, through the ranks, you just couldn't be a standout 170 pounder without facing a lot of wrestlers. You just couldn't. Jake Shields, Frank Trigg, Josh Koscheck, Johnny Hendricks. He's just fought a lot of these guys. Ben Askren, uh, Jake Ellenberger, decent wrestler. Um, he had to face a lot of wrestlers to get where he is. Matt Linlin, if for those who remember that, he's just fought a lot of guys who had a style like Colby Covington. Was he successful every single time? No. Lost to Jake Shields, lost to Ben Askren. Um, although I think the Ben Askren loss is really controversial. Um, so the, the thing is, is that when you look at Colby Covington's record, he's never fought a particularly hard puncher uh, who had the knockout power, especially in medium and close range that Robbie Lawler has. Robbie Lawler has faced a lot of Division One wrestlers, knocked out a lot of them. And beaten a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So there isn't a whole lot Colby Covington's going to show him that he hasn't at least experienced before. Colby Covington hasn't had to take on a 170-pounder with the kind of knockout power Robbie Lawler brings. He just hasn't had to face that yet. He's faced guys he could wear down at medium range. And whenever I analyze a fight or break it down or think about who I think is going to win or what's going on is who have they fought who fights like that? How many have they fought? What caliber were they? And what was the outcome? Robbie Lawler's resume is full of standout wrestlers. Full of them. Not successful against everybody, but successful against most of them. Colby Covington, when I look at his record, he's only been in the spotlight his last three or four fights. I mean, he hasn't taken on, understandably. I mean, nobody spends their whole career at the top anymore. He used to back in the day. He started in the UFC in like the third or fourth fight. doesn't work that way anymore. So when I look at his record, all tough guys. I mean, he, he earned his position here. But I don't see the one-shot knockout guy, the guy with a lot of veteran experience. You could put him out with one shot. That guy just isn't there. Now, Kobe Covington is good at making fights personal. He's good at making them about the emotional response you have to his comments. Number one, Robbie Lawler doesn't give a 
rat's ass about what Col- Colby Covington has to say. And another thing I'm really surprised about, they used to train at American Top Team, I believe at the same time, I think they overlapped. I haven't heard any gym stories from Colby Covington. This is a guy against John Jones, talked about, oh, I took him down at Will when we were in junior college together and all this stuff. I haven't heard any sparring stories, which is a little weird because I imagine in the same weight class, they must have sparred once or twice. And if Colby Covington had gotten the better of it, we would probably be hearing about it ad nauseum, and we haven't. That was an interesting side note. I was kind of expecting more, you know, this guy at the gym, maybe some PED accusation. You know, Colby Covington will go anywhere. So I was kind of expecting more of that in-house kind of trash talk, and that's been pretty rare. The only thing I can think of is if he left, um, if he joined after uh, Robbie Lawler left the top team. I don't think he did. But that, even that whole connection, oh, I'm fighting for Dan Lambert because he stabbed us in the back and left top team. Robbie doesn't care about any of that stuff. So I don't think that's a huge issue. But – the negatives for Robbie is, if you look at the Rafael Dos Anjos fight, it wasn't necessarily the striking, although Rafael did get be- the better of the striking. It was more, Rafael Dos Anjos was always right in his chest, wearing Robbie out. The one thing about being a power puncher, two things. Number one, volume and power generally don't go together. A fighter that throws a really hard punch doesn't throw that many of them. They generally don't, don't throw great combinations. And also, um, it can fatigue you throwing power punches all the time. Dos Santos just stayed in Robbie Lawler's chest and wore on him the whole time. And Robbie had trouble with that physical kind of pressure. That's exactly what Colby Covington's going to do. Exactly. Now, I think Rafael Dos Santos is a cleaner striker offensively and defensively, so he could deal with that middle range. He could deal with the punches of Robbie Lawler when he was in those positions. Colby Covington hasn't shown a very refined striking game. It's gotten better, but I don't know if he's good enough to kind of stay in that middle pressure zone without eating big shots. Because one from Lally Lally, Robbie Lawler can put your lights out. And that's something you have to respect. And that's been his kryptonite against great wrestlers is as soon as you get in wrestling range, he throws big shots. You can't just walk through them and get your wrestling game going. So that's going to be the issue. The way I see this fight going is I don't. I think we'll know exactly how it's going to go second and third round because if Colby Covington can make it out of the first two rounds without getting knocked out or eating a big punch – he can wear Robbie down. Robbie's his uh, deadliest early in fights. He's good late, but he's great early. So we saw we did Ben Askren early. I mean, ragged all of them and almost knocked him out immediately, and then Ben Askren started coming back. So if Colby Covington can make it out of the first two rounds, and that's how I felt in the Dos Anjos fight. As the fight started going along, he started wearing Dos Anjos down, and Dos Anjos just couldn't keep up with him. So they could do the same thing to Robbie. If he can stay in Robbie's chest and negate the power by staying close and using his wrestling and wearing Robbie down, he can beat him late. But those first two rounds are going to be extremely dangerous for Colby Covington because Robbie only needs one. Robbie's a veteran guy. Now, what I always say to myself or think, you know, especially when I was commentating fights, is what's better for the division? Uh, where do the guys go should they win? What are the stakes? Part of your job as a commentator is to set stakes. We know the stakes for Colby Covington. If he wins, he gets a title shot against Kamaru Usman as soon as Kamaru Usman is ready to go. A Robbie Lawler win really throws the division into turmoil because Robbie is coming off two losses. Um, then there was the Donald Cerrone win and then the loss to Tyron Woodley. So he's lost three out of his last four. If he wins, does he get a title shot? He shouldn't. Uh, because he just hasn't built up the resume yet. It puts him back in contender status. It doesn't give him an immediate title shot. So Colby Covington, should he win, gets a title shot. If Robbie wins, it really throws off 170, because Ben Askren was in line, he just got brutally knocked out. Colby Covington was in line, let's say he gets brutally knocked out, for argument's sake. It really muddles the division, because you have a bunch of guys in line who don't have a lot of wins in a row. Um, If you look at Jorge Masvidal, similar situation. He got back on track in his last couple fights, but he was coming off losses before that. He doesn't have that contender streak. Robbie Lawler does not have a contender streak. It'd be interesting to see who gets a title shot should Robbie Lawler win. So in a sense, it's better for the division if Colby Covington wins because you have a clear contender. Here's the next one, and Colby will talk it up and all this stuff. But should Robbie win, who knows who gets it next? It's, it, I mean, there's so much talent at 170. I mean, it's kind of an embarrassment of riches. It's not bad, but it's, it's, it's a more confusing division. So you could argue Colby Covington is fighting for more. But... In this case, I don't think motivation is a problem for either guy. I don't think Robbie going, ah, even if I win, I'm probably not going to get a title shot. That doesn't matter to him. The most important fight for Robbie is the next fight. And Colby Covington takes every fight seriously. One of the problems, I don't want to say problems, one of the issues with being the kind of trash talker Colby Covington is or, or um, you know, making fights emotional is 
you make every fight a big fight. Everybody wants to kick your ass. You you, ha- you have to show up every single time because you make every fight so personal. Tito Ortiz had that problem. I mean, he made every fight super personal for his opponent. So you can't have an off night and think, oh, you know, whatever, I'll just walk over this guy. No, I mean, they, they really dig deep because they don't like you. So um, it's going to be interesting. I would say the edge is, is going to be round two. If Colby Cummings can get out of round two, he's got a good shot of, of winning this fight late, of wearing Robbie down. If Robbie catches him clean rounds one and two, even late, you can put your lights out. So it's going to be really interesting main event. Uh, the co-main and main are the, are the reasons to tune into this, but I think the main event is, is quite good. So check it out. I'll do a post-fight breakdown when I'm done. If I'm back home, might be some issues this weekend, but we'll see. All right, so enjoy.